Welcome into K-State Online. I am Mason Voth, joined by Drew Galloway here on a Monday as we are getting dangerously close to a real game week. One week from today, it'll be Chris Kleiman talking, setting the stage for UT Martin, getting to hear from some of the players and everything else that goes into just norm, like just a normal week, getting you ready for college football. It's going to be here before we know it. It's exciting to think about. And uh, I look forward to when that happens. Something else that I'm looking forward to is the 2025 Aer Lingus College Football Classic, Drew. Because before we talk about what's going on with Matt Wells, there's no better way to kick off the 2025 college football season than cheering on K-State and the Aer Lingus College Football Classic in Dublin, Ireland. The Cats will square off with the Iowa State Cyclones on August 23rd, 2025. Whether it's a quick trip to Dublin for the game, a multi-city adventure throughout the Irish countryside, or exploring the Emerald Isle on your own, there's a package for you. Visit Cats2Ireland.com for information on official travel and hospitality packages. That's Cats2Ireland.com. And uh, I'll apologize just off the jump to everybody. Uh, Yeah, sometimes you hear a rogue one-year-old child in the background making unruly noise that is not fit for a, a K-State football podcast. Uh, today, I'm going to cut her some slack. One-year checkup, so five shots. The legs are sore from just getting poked repeatedly. Uh, she's honestly handled it w- well for the most part, but I can tell that it's catching up with her right now. So uh, we'll let Matt Wells and Drew Galloway do a lot of the heavy lifting today. And, Drew, I want to just start with probably one of the most notable things that has gone on with K-State football this offseason, and it's talking about depth. So Matt Wells called it competitive depth. Here's what he had to say about it on the offense today. So I I see a a team that's got really good depth uh, compared to some Big 12 teams that I've been around the last five years. And, and, uh, man, we've got some good areas of uh, competitive uh, depth and some competitive battles. Um, that I think they're important for each guy to kind of raise his level um, and uh, and continue to improve because of that depth. And I think um, hopefully that'll show up in October and November when you have some injuries or sometimes like that, that we're going to need that depth uh, to show up. So that's Matt Wells just kind of giving his thoughts on depth and how everything else is going on. Uh, now, I, I will say this. I think it's it's true. There's depth going on with K State and everything else. Uh, more than anything, the the point of showing that is the continued confidence that this staff seems to have in the talent pool that they have available to them. And I think right there, that's kind of where uh, we see that come through. And and it's true also that later in the year, like that, will pay dividends to have. But it kind of came up in some other points. Do you think? the competitive depth on offense is because you have so many good options or is it because you have so many guys that are just of a similar talent level and not necessarily the talent level that you need at, you know, a big 12 champion caliber level, which is what K-State is looking for. You know, I, I think that it can be a little bit of both. I, I think that having a competitive depth is a good thing. And it's something that we've kind of talked about even before, uh, training camp and fall camp really got going about we thought that this was the most depth that a Chris Clement team has had. So it, it's nothing really new or surprising. Uh, but I think that it, it's more of a good thing because I think that when you're hearing some of the names that are being brought up, it's some guys that you think that have that like high ceiling and potential that have really been kind of clawing at the bit and kind of wailing away and having a really good camp. And I think that's important and especially for that competitive depth. If those guys keep kind of hammering away that I think that you'll kind of see the cream will rise to the top and you'll see a little bit more of players playing in a game. And I think that that's more important because like Matt Will said, having guys that are your number one guys that are starters like Jace Brown, Keegan Johnson, Dante Cephas, if you can keep them, a receiver healthier throughout the year because you've been playing guys like Trace Spivey and Sterling Lockett and Jaden Jackson like 15 to 20 snaps a game if that means that the top three will be even healthier and fresher in October November December potentially January I think that that is probably the most ideal outcome 
One other thing that was brought up about how, how good certain elements of K-State's team has been and depth and everything else was uh, last week, was it, where we heard about Marquis Siegel had three picks in one practice, and a lot of people made a big deal out of it. I think probably a bigger deal was made out of it by people that uh, were not affiliated with K-State in any way, and we know that there's some context behind there, like two of those balls were not thrown by Avery Johnson. And also, uh, Matt Wells today came in. I think he was ready to dispel any negative comments about the offense or anything with that uh, one practice. Last week, we <clears throat> talked to defensive players. They were pretty happy with the amount of turnovers they're causing in practice. Well, I think you talked to them on the right day. <laughs> that is my opinion on that. <laughs> You talk to him on the right day. Certainly, there's been great give and take, uh, which I think is what you want um, from an overall aspect of, of the team. But I think we've been pretty stingy with the ball, and our quarterbacks have done a good job with that in camp. There was, there was like two days in a row where we did not uh, do a very good job of taking care of the ball and making good decisions, and, and they capitalized, which a good defense will. And I certainly think that was the day you talked to him. So, all right, there, there you have it. Matt Wells ready to come out, just get in front of it and say, hey, look, I, I have all this going on. Don't worry about the offense. You caught the, the defense on the right day, which is also fair because we know that there are probably days where Joe Klanderman's wondering, why did my defense give up, you know, three touchdowns of 30-plus yards or something? You know, like that happens to everybody in these circumstances. Uh, I think it's just another one of those where, if, do you want a good defense? Do you want a good offense? Do you want both if you're a fan? And sometimes a good defense is going to make a good offense look bad, and other times a good offense will make a good defense look bad. And K-State will show that throughout the course of this season when they're playing other teams. Right now, the only people they have to expose are themselves, and so they're just doing it to each other every other day. I think that it's also not a surprise, even – if it wasn't like a, a one-off kind of thing that Matt Wells made it seem that the defense would be causing turnovers. Number one, this is the best time to, if you're Avery Johnson, to really kind of force the issue and see what you can and can't do. I remember when Patrick Mahomes was just starting to take over for the Chiefs that there were reports that he was throwing like three or four interceptions uh, a day at camp. He turned out pretty okay. And then number two, you look at Jacob Knuth, inexperienced Avery Johnson doesn't have a ton of game experience and take on Roberson has some experience, but not at the power four level for a few years. So I, I think that it'd be more surprising if the defense wasn't really kind of causing issues for the K-State offense on, uh, on some days, because you look at the, the defense and how much that that defense and the secondary specifically returns and what the offense returns. So I, I kind of brushed off as no big deal to begin with and didn't think that it was like a crazy quote by Marquis Siegel last week either. Yeah, it, it happens. It's 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 going to happen. And also stuff like this will happen when you're 19 days in to practice this year uh, and you're still 12 days away from a game. Like everybody's adjusting. And also in those settings, yes, while you're trying to do things the way you're supposed to, you're also – going to try and push it a little bit more to do some things that you want to do in a game. Like there's a very real possibility that Marquis Siegel making certain plays on the ball are things that he would not do in an actual game because yes, while he, he does come down with it there, he may know, okay, this is a high risk, high reward thing where I could get burnt if I try to make this play in a regular game. Same for these quarterbacks trying to make some of these throws where are you going to do it, you know, against, BYU to start conference play this year? Are you going to do it at Iowa State to end the season to make that throw? Probably not if it's, you know, a, a one possession game. You know, you're, you're going to be a little bit more careful. Uh, but might you do it when you're playing Cincinnati, uh, that final home game of the year, and you're up 28 points uh, in the fourth quarter? Yeah, you, you might take that risk there. You might try and show off a little bit. Like, the behind-the-back pass that Patrick Mahomes made on Saturday, we weren't going to ever see that for the first time in a regular season game. It was going to happen in a preseason game, and I don't know that we'll ever see that in a regular season game. Would not surprise me if it did happen. Like He'd be the guy that I would trust to pull it off, but 
Uh, that might be one of those where you say, yeah, we can do it in this setting, not in the next one. So I, there is reason to just have a little bit of pause and people should probably be prepared for slight growing pains early on in, in the season for the offense. But I don't think it's going to take them very long to get this thing going because they just, they have too much talent there. And uh, Connor Riley and Matt Wells have both sounded not too terribly concerned about what's going on. Like Matt Wells did not come across as the, you know, the same way that KU's offensive coordinator did when talking about their offensive line last week, where that man was wearing it that he must have not thought that the offensive line was playing very well. And same type of deal. He could have been, you could have been catching him on a bad day. That felt a little more like a bad day. I don't think, I don't think Matt Wells wakes up in the morning and goes, I don't know what I'm going to do with Avery Johnson at quarterback uh, or with DJ Giddens no. and Dylan Edwards at running back. And I think they don't see some growing pains, but I, I think the growing pains might be masked by big plays and chunk plays, which was what K-State was really lacking last year. So I would take the growing pains if that means that you're going to get like a 60, 65 yard touchdown. All right. Uh, let's talk Avery Johnson. This is what Matt Wells had to say about his quarterback. Yeah. Um, continues to improve. Um, he's got a hunger and a desire uh, to improve. I think just challenging him every day um, is uh, important to him and his growth. Um, he is electric with the ball in his hands. I mean, he is uber talented um, out in space. Um, he's throwing the ball well. Um, so I think, you know, for Avery, it's um, been important to get a multitude of looks um, and we certainly get that from our defense daily, from pressure to, to drop eight um, and all the things that he needs to see. Um, and so I think that's uh, challenging him. And then certainly there's going to be the season uh, challenge that goes from uh, game to day, uh, game to game, and uh, in week to week from different structures. Um, there's going to be a soreness factor. There's going to be uh, just the grind of the season that um, he's going to get to go through, you know, as the starter for the first time. So, but I'm I'm proud of him. And I'm excited to coach him, and uh, he'll have a really good year. Matt Wells has had plenty of success in the past with different quarterbacks. Uh, he, you know, he spent time helping on the Oklahoma staff with Dylan Gabriel, who who played really well for Oklahoma, uh, and was definitely not part of the problem down there that uh, Brent Venables has had going on. And then, obviously, Jordan Love is his greatest success story. Um, what what do you make of the the Matt Wells and Avery Johnson relationship? I know that a lot of people are curious, like, ah, uh, you know, Colin Klein's gone and everything. But some people seem to have the vibe that that Wells and Avery together is a better combo than Avery and Colin Klein. Where do you stand on that? Yeah, I don't think that it's necessarily crazy to think that Matt Wells will help. Avery Johnson grow more than Colin Klein did just based on track record. And as much as like, we all loved Colin Klein, he wasn't the prettiest passer of all time. Like it got the, it got the job done, but I think that from a mechanical standpoint, you probably want somebody like Matt Wells's background. And I think that we've even kind of seen that. And just like the f the few flashes that we've seen in practice is, where I think that Avery Johnson's uh, body looks better throwing the ball than it did last year. And it just looks more natural and a little bit more quick. And I think that that's kind of a testament to Matt Wells' coaching and Avery Johnson's ability to learn all of that and grasp that. Uh, I think the one thing that really kind of stood out to me, and I kind of talked about it in uh, the last portion about talking about the turnovers and everything, the most important thing for Avery Johnson right now is that he's seeing K-State's defense and especially the secondary every day, uh, because I think that that secondary could be near the top of the big 12 and the top 20 in the country. And it wouldn't surprise me. Uh, so if he sees all of those different looks and everything that uh, Joe Klanerman's defense is throwing at him, I think that you'll kind of see a more relaxed uh, Avery. And I, I think that we're kind of in the portion of camp right now where Nobody really says it outright, but you kind of get the feeling that everybody's kind of sick of just playing each other. Uh, and, and you kind of got to see that with some of the, what, what Matt Wells said about the defense and how uh, the defense is just giving them a lot of looks and the offense is also giving the defense a lot of looks, which is causing uh, some problems for the defense, which I think that that's all a good thing because 
I think that the the ceiling of this team is super high. So if they can show those multiple looks and, and get the installs all done, and now it's like, okay, let's line up. And it sounds like they're getting ready to start to ramp up for UT Martin, which I think everybody's excited about. Yeah, that's uh, probably looking forward to just getting into that that regular flow of everything. Uh, one other thing that M- Matt Wells said that I liked uh, to hear when discussing Avery Johnson was kind of talking about leadership at that position. And it wasn't just the, hey, you know, you got to be the, the rah-rah guy. You got to have the verbal and the social side of the leadership and keeping everybody positive. Matt Wells was just very head on and saying like, you kind of have to be good to be a good leader too. Uh, and that's what I uh, really like to hear. You know, the biggest thing for him is focusing on his um, improvement. I think uh, there's a lot of facets of leadership. Uh, production is certainly re- up there really, really high. You can't lead unless you produce in a lot of ways. Now, you can lead in different ways, but when you're the starting quarterback, you need to produce. Um, and then it's the verbal leadership, your work ethic, uh, along with that production, you know, and I think that he knows that. Um, but, yeah, he's absolutely got got that factor. So, I just – it's nice to hear when uh, nobody really sugarcoats something or just kind of dances around, like, the main point of everything. And it is, like, you can be a great guy, you can be a good leader in certain ways, but you kind of have to back it up then, and that's the strongest form of leadership. And – uh Matt Wells subscribes to it. And I I just think every time that we've gotten to hear from Matt Wells since he's been hired, it's been good things to say. It's been positive. And I I did start to think today, is the way that Matt Wells handles himself and and talks about things, like, is he just kind of meant to be in this role as like a really good coordinator or position coach? And maybe that, like, he was talking today and I like everything that I heard from him, but there are times where I could go, you know, if I was Texas tech and I was a tech fan and we were, you know, four and six, I could see where I could maybe get a little agitated with the way that he does. Now, again, demeanor would be different. This is uh, like preseason stuff versus, you know, thick of it with, with Texas tech, but like, is this what he's meant to be? Cause I think he's really good at this. Yeah, he he is very, very good. And you could tell that he was a former head coach with how he kind of spoke with the media. Uh, The other thing that I'll I'll hit on with uh, him talking about uh, Avery and leadership and you have to produce to be a leader. uh, It's I think that kind of goes hand in hand with uh, Avery being announced as one of the captains. So, I mean, that if you're subscribing to what Matt Wells says about leadership, that means that Avery has been pretty darn good if he is a captain. That's uh, that, that's a that's a good way to look at it there. Uh, one other note here from Matt Wells. He talked about the tweaks that he has brought to the K-State offense. And this is like anybody that's come in new to Chris Kleiman's staff where they're like, I know that I don't have to do a lot here, but I am brought in to make this thing look a little bit better or improve in some facet. And I think Matt Wells understands that. Well, I think... You know, first of all, you come in and there's been so much successful uh, parts of the offense before I ever got here. I mean, this offense was second in the Big 12 in scoring last year. Um, And it certainly ran the ball at a really high level. And so you've got different facets of the offense, whether it's the run game or it's QB run game. And then you get into, you know, uh, parts of the passing game. And I think that that's, you know, where some things maybe have been um, tweaked just a little bit, but, um, you know, overall, a lot of it will be the same. And I think, you know, maybe some of those, uh, um, things will come out once we get into season, everybody can see that. What do you expect the, the Matt Wells tweaks to be? Cause he did give a little bit of insight today into maybe how he envisions this offense or, or some of the things that, uh, he, he plans on doing for them. So what do you anticipate the tweaks being? Yeah, I, I love that answer, by the way. That, I think that was probably the, the best answer that Matt Wells gave during his press conference. Uh, the, the tweaks that I think I anticipate from him is probably going to be the, like the shift trade in motion. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, sorry about that. Oh, you're all good. Uh, that was Because that was something that he uh, spoke about during the, the press conference. And I think that the other thing that you'll see is 
just a, a rotation of receivers. Uh, we didn't see that at K State under Colin Klein. And I think that we're kind of getting to the point where if six or seven receivers don't play in a game, I'd be a little bit surprised uh, just to kind of keep that rotation, keep guys fresh. But I think that that was his best answer in how he wants to tweak the offense because he knows what he is at K-State to do, and it's to kind of fix the passing game because even in 2022, it wasn't perfect. Uh, so if he can kind of take that up a next level and he knows that, that he, I think that he thinks that the offense will really, really take off. Yeah. I, I mean, he, we'll talk a little bit more about the receivers today because the receivers were brought up. You mentioned it in rapid recap. And I think this is something that people will be interested in hearing because it does kind of feel like every time we get something on the receivers, there's just a different grouping of guys that get brought up. So what did you hear him say about the receivers today? Yeah, so it sounds like the six guys that are really in contention to play a lot are Keegan Johnson, Jace Brown, Dante Cephas, Jaden Jackson, Sterling Lockett, Trace Spivey. I don't think that any of those names are necessarily surprising, but I think the thing that is more refreshing, I think, and nice to hear is how fast all of those guys are playing and they're playing with a lot of confidence and really developing that way. Uh, but also the refreshing thing is to hear that they want to get all six of those guys on the field. Like there were times last year at K that case, they would only play four, maybe five receivers a game on a, like a, on a good day for the receiver rotation. But if you can go six deep and all six of those guys can kind of do different things. I, I think that that is really important. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. And I, I think we're, we are seeing from K state just kind of uh uh, a strong approach this year to understanding what some of the shortcomings were last year and how to kind of address them. And I mean, I, this team feels like the options that you're going to have at receiver are going to be a little bit more trustworthy in certain moments where like, you feel like, okay, this guy doesn't have it. We can, we can make a change here where that, you know, last year I thought at one point maybe K State was going in the direction of having good depth at wide receiver, but at the end they just had, for whatever reason, were too reliable on really just Ben Sennett and and Philip Brooks, and so you and then eventually you know Jace Brown came on and that was really big for that development. But you want to be able to circle guys and and get them in and get them out, and you also need that if you're going to play faster. Like at times it sounds like. Matt Wells expects this offense to do. So it's good to hear all that. And I know that people are excited to hear Sterling Lockett and Trey Spivey get positive mentions in there with, you know, some of the more veteran and experienced players because I think those are two fan favorites where K State fans go to bed at night and after they dream about Avery Johnson being awesome, they're like, well, you know, I'd love to see another Lockett play really well. And boy, Trey Spivey seems to have a lot going for him. Like, I think. Just the wide receiver talk has been good to hear. And again, at the end of the day, it seems like every offseason, K-State wide receivers get this, well, you know, they're doing some things. They're going to be better than, you know, receivers in the past or whatever. We'll have to wait and see probably by about game eight, we can actually make that determination on if it's working out. But uh, I thought it was interesting to to see and hear what he said about the wide receivers today. Anything else that Matt Wells uh, said today that you kind of took away and we're like, oh, okay, I'd like to hear that. Or maybe there was something bad that you heard. You said, eh, not the biggest fan of how he handled that. Uh, I think that kind of going hand in hand with what he talked about, what he wants to bring the tweaks for is what he imagines K-State offense to be. And he wants it to be really multiple with uh, times where they can go 11 personnel. Sometimes they can go multiple tight ends. Sometimes they can go five wide. He wants there to be multiple backs on the field at times. He wants them to go fast at times, but also slow at times. I think that that was really interesting to hear, uh, especially going fast and slow. He kind of called it like the art of knowing when and when not to play with pace. Uh, because uh, remember, Matt, all of Matt Wells' stops, it was the pedals down the whole way. Utah State, Texas Tech, Oklahoma, all have played with tremendous pace. And Matt Wells is a part of all of that. So to kind of hear about the art form and, and 
especially hearing him talk about in 2022 that K-State really gave Oklahoma fits when they decided to go fast and then go slow. So I think that that's kind of really interesting to hear. And as somebody that is, I want K-State to play a little bit faster. It was really interesting to hear kind of like that art form and what he wants the offense to look like. Yeah, I'm I'm interested to see what that ends up uh, appearing as when we get into the season and and get to see K State do it all for real. But uh, the honeymoon's still still going with Matt Wells for a lot of people. I don't think that uh, today made him think anything different. And I just it, it seems like maybe one of the more significant hires of Chris Kleiman's time at K State. I mean, you could say it's a bunch of the guys that he hired back in. Uh, you know, December of 2018, uh, because most of them are still here. Uh, but you look like this feels like one of the more impactful decisions that he's made. And uh, now it's just up to figuring out how it actually looks on the field. But that was what Matt Wells, the co-OC and quarterback coach had to say today. Now, he did also say uh, that Connor Riley will be in the booth this year when he's calling plays. Matt Wells will be on the field. What did you have any significant takeaway from that being the outcome there that Connor Riley goes up and Matt Wells is down? Honestly, not really, because I figured that that was how it was going to be. I am more interested to kind of see the dynamic of Connor Riley and Drew Little and how that works with the offensive line more than Riley and Wells, because I, you need one of the two to be on the field. And I would much rather have Wells be on the field not calling plays because I don't like that you would be able to see the whole field. Like, I, Part of me is like very curious about how Joe Klanerman can call the defense while being on the field, but I think that's because I have to be able to see the whole picture to really kind of understand everything. Yeah, well, I, I mean, if you've seen Joe Klanerman, that's a guy you want on the field. Like that's He walks out there like, that's a football oh, yeah. coach right there. I guess when you're six five, it probably does help that you can probably see the whole field. Yeah, he's he's got a pretty good view up there, I think, uh, <laughs> compared to to some of the others. But uh, yeah, and the you know the Drew Little stuff has been brought up multiple times now because that is also a significant thing with you know rule changes and how many people can be on field coaches during games, and then also like the trust factor there between Connor Riley and him and, and the rest of the staff. It it gives you this opportunity to right now make everything seem like it's setting up to go pretty smooth for K-State. Because there is a world where with what you have going on, it it could theoretically not be a smooth operation. And, and that's not to say that we don't get into the season and we see K-State have to maybe make some game day adjustments. Who, who knows? It'll be interesting to kind of follow along with and see. But uh, that was this all the stuff from Matt Wells today. And uh, – We'll see how it goes heading into the rest of the week. And next week, we're a week away from getting thoughts from Chris Kleiman. Normal game week, ready for UT Martin. We will have plenty of other things going on throughout the rest of the week here. Previewing quarterbacks tomorrow, we'll talk a little bit more about the rest of the team through the week. We'll have a recruiting show, as always. We'll round it out with headlines and uh, get everybody set for what will be coming next week because it'll get busy and uh, it'll be football time for real. So for Drew Galloway, I'm Mason Voth. If you want more on the Cats, go to On3, find kstateonline.com. We'll get you taken care of over there. Plenty of things to tide you over until we get to August 31st.